Hi, everyone. <laughs> Am I good? Am I on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, this new technology, I don't know when he's gone live. So thank you so much for being here. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook, where we share all about our whole food plant-based lifestyle. And today we're sharing all about how to have a holiday meal and still be plant-based. And we also happen to be SOS free, which stands for salt, oil, and sugar free. So this is gonna be really fun. I was cooking a lot today. I did a little bit of preparation yesterday. We were having a difficult time trying to get it all um, in, in the camera so that you could see everything that we have. So I guess um, if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments. Just preface your question with four question marks, ask your question, and then end with four question marks. My husband Tom is off camera and he will be helping to moderate and look for comments. And then we have Tiffany, Randy, and Jessica, Jesse, and they are um, helping us also in the comments. So they can also answer some simple questions that you guys have or um, help you out if you need help. And they also try to get rid of trolls for us too because they always like to show up as well. So we are approaching the holiday season. Uh, of course, we're doing this just a few weeks prior to Thanksgiving, but I want you to know that, you know, we use basically the same meal for a lot of different occasions, birthdays, anniversaries. Uh, it can be good for Christmas, Easter. I, you know, you just change a couple things up and it can be good for that. So I'm gonna um, talk to you about what we have here. And then I also have uh, photos of different meals that that we have, different recipes that we have used for different celebrations and holidays. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be making. My daughter and I usually plan the meal out together and then divide up who's going to make what, and we haven't done that yet. So, but you know, we don't sweat about it, don't worry about it like we did when we first went plant-based because you know, we know that Whatever we have is gonna be fine. And all these foods, people who follow the standard American diet also seem to really like them. And so, you know, we'll feed them to them as well. Now, if I was making this for the family, I would make larger portions. It's just Tom and I, of course, tonight. And so, you know, we are not, um, I didn't make the quantity that I would if the family was going to be coming over. So we always have a big, beautiful salad, um, even at the holiday time. You know, I like to sequence my meals, so I do like to start with a big, beautiful salad. So I have that over here. This one is a chopped salad. I'm gonna bring it over and hold it up so you can see it. And uh, this one's great for fall. I have made this for a, a couple of different holidays and served it to people and they love it. When we were pre-pandemic doing our weight loss classes, I would make a couple of these for our weight loss classes and they loved it. So it is a, about a pound of salad underneath all this beauty. And I chopped it in this bowl with a mezzaluna knife and that just makes it more flavorful. And then for this one, I added garbanzo beans. I have pomegranates. I have fresh basil. I also have persimmons. Those are uh, in season right now and they're absolutely delicious and I love them. And then I took a cold Japanese sweet potato that I had pre-baked and I cut it in half and then sliced it. And then I put it in the air fryer at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. And that makes what we call Japanese sweet potato croutons. Now, sometimes I take the no salt, everything bagel seasoning, pour that out on a plate, and I will pat the croutons in that just on one side and then put them in the air fryer and that turns out really delicious and gives it a different flavor now for a dressing for this i would just use the simply lemon from california balsamic also the um, napa valley naturals grand reserve balsamic is also really good with this salad because it doesn't need a whole lot and i i forgot to put the chopped apple on this but i didn't want to mess up my pretty presentation 
Before I toss it, I will put chopped apple in it because that just so tastes like fall with this. So this is a salad that I have a lot right now for my lunch because it's wonderful. And then I would just drizzle the um, balsamic vinegar on it and then I would just toss it and just like you would any other salad and then let everyone serve themselves. And so that's a really nice addition. Um, that would probably, as a side salad, I would say that, you know, probably maybe six servings, maybe eight, if they're people who eat a big quantity like I do. Okay, so, um, so we would have that. Oh, I forgot, I should have started with the soup actually, but that's okay, because this can be the first course. So this is our curry ginger butternut squash soup. It is a blended soup. I make it in the pressure cooker. Everything just gets put in there and then it all gets blended at the end. It couldn't be easier to make. You can make it in advance if you want to. You can freeze it. So if you wanted to make it like a week in advance, you could totally do that and then you could freeze it the day, that, the day before Thanksgiving or whichever holiday you're going to make it for then you could just um, put it in the fridge, let it start to thaw out, put it in a, a pan on top of the stove, or you could do it in the microwave as well, and just gently heat it up. And if it has gotten a little bit thick, sometimes it does, you can just add some more milk to it. And if it separates um, at all, you can just put it back in the um, blender and blend it or use your immersion blender and it's great. So a couple ways that you can serve it, you can serve it hot in mugs because remember it's a blended soup so you don't really need to have a spoon and you can just serve it to your guests as they're coming in um, to the kitchen. Everybody wants to hang out with us in the kitchen, right? Even though we're busy and running around. And so you can give them a mug of this and have that instead of an appetizer. And it's just a really fun way to do it. I like to put a little bit of freshly ground nutmeg on top. This happens to be my microplane um, nutmeg grinder and I love it, but you can get like a four or five dollar little a nutmeg grinder and just buy the whole nutmegs and that works great and this is super fun and delicious if you want though you can serve it as a soup for a first entree and we like it with a little bit of wild rice on the bot it put it in the bottom of the plate and then the soup on top and you can garnish it either with fresh chives or chopped up fresh arugula and I didn't have any arugula and when I was at Trader Joe's yesterday they were out of chives because I was going to buy chives to put on top of that. So then we move on and we have our main course and of course for us, those of us that are eating plant-based any of these side dishes we would be happy with as a main course but for the holidays it's kind of fun to have something to present as our main course and so for that i have this wonderful lentil loaf now i will tell you if you got the fall issue of the health science magazine these recipes were in there for the garlic mashed potatoes the lentil loaf um, with the glaze the date glaze and the curry ginger butternut squash soup i we've I saw on Facebook that some people wrote today that they hadn't gotten their magazines yet. We did talk to the folks at um, the magazine, at Health Science Magazine, and they said everything has been sent out, but because of the election, the post office is behind in delivering them. So we're sorry that you haven't gotten yours yet um, and that your shipment has been delayed because of the post office, but you can go on the website, the health science website, and once you have signed up to um, get the magazine, you're a member, you have access to all the digital magazines. So go on there, you can get the recipes, you can look at the magazine, and then eventually your hard copy is going to show up. So this is the lentil loaf with the date glaze. Uh, the ladies at Health Science Magazine that um, worked with me to put the layout together are loving this. They have made it multiple, multiple times. And I get lots of positive feedback about it. It is so nice because see how beautifully it cuts. This is a piece 
that I cut and it serves so nicely. So many of the lentil loaves just fall apart when you cut them. You want to zoom but in this on one, that? Sure, if you want to zoom in. But this one does not and so um, it's great and it's delicious too. It has sun-dried tomatoes and Italian seasoning in it, but it doesn't, you want this way? Yeah, you want to see the end cut. <laughs> yeah, see the end cut there? Yeah, great, thanks. And so, um, of course, if I was making this for, if the family was coming over, I would make two of them. Now, the beautiful thing about this is you can go ahead and assemble it the day before and then put it in the pan and you don't have to bake it until the day you're going to serve it. And so it can't get easier than that, right? And the date glaze is just really super delicious. And, I, and you make your own uh, date paste with that, which is super easy to do. Okay, so this is a really delicious Brussels sprouts and butternut squash um, side dish. And I love it. It doesn't look very attractive, but trust me, it tastes so much better than it looks. So this is kind of a riff off of Chef. AJ's Brussels sprouts um, that she does in the oven. So I used for this one pound of whole Brussels sprouts, fresh ones, and I trimmed them and quartered them. And then I had, it was a 12 ounce bag of already pre-cut, pre-peeled butternut squash from Trader Joe's. And then I just took and cut those smaller because I wanted them to be able to cook in the amount of time. And then, let's see, I don't know if I have I guess I didn't leave it out. Um, then I take two tablespoons of a thick balsamic vinegar and I used the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve and then two tablespoons of a pomegranate molasses and I'll grab the bottle in a minute and show you what that looks like and um, mix those together and then uh, four tablespoons of mustard and you can use the Westbray no salt added mustard if you um, are okay with a little bit of sodium go ahead and use whatever like if you have a Dijon I wouldn't use yellow mustard but you could use Dijon or um, a spicy mustard and then a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of onion powder and then garlic cloves to taste and I take and just slice up fresh garlic cloves and then I just mix it all together and then spread it out either over a silpat mat on a rimmed baking sheet or put parchment paper down preheat the oven to 400 degrees and then I roast them for about 40 minutes and my lower rack of my convection oven does a really nice job. It gets them just a little bit crispy, which I really like. And then just to make them prettier for everybody else, because I'm okay if they look a little bit like dirt, um, but everybody else might not. And so I just put some fresh pomegranate um, perils over the top of it just to give it a little more appeal. I wish we could get dried cranberries that weren't sweetened and oiled, but um, so far I have not seen those. But anyway, this is just so delicious. And if you like black pepper, you can add some freshly ground black pepper to this as well. And it's wonderful. I even like to take some of this when I have it left over and put it on top of my chopped salad because I just like the the texture of the Brussels sprouts and um, just how um, they are different than the chopped greens. Okay, then we have garlic mashed potatoes. I love garlic, can you guys tell? So this is also a super easy recipe that you just make in the pressure cooker and you don't even have to drain the potatoes because I use a vegetable broth to cook them in and that becomes some of the mashing liquid and then you can just add your own plant milk whatever kind you like I like to heat the plant milk up a little bit before I add it so it doesn't cool the potatoes down and if you want um, a little bit creamier richer flavor then use soy milk because soy milk has a higher fat content than like uh, almond milk but you can use whatever kind of a plant milk that you have that you like and then I usually have fresh chives that I like to sprinkle over the top and also add in but like I said Trader Joe's didn't have any 
so I just had to use my dried chives. But these are super delicious. And if you have any left over, I have a couple of recipes on YouTube. I have YouTube videos for them, how to stuff um, little portobello mushrooms if you wanna make appetizers or stuff the big portobello mushrooms and have that be a, a full on entree with a little bit of cheese sauce over the top and then you air fry them. They are so good. So can't go wrong with mashed potatoes. And these, I cook the garlic right in the pot. If you wanna oven roast some garlic, you can oven roast some garlic instead and then add that. That just has um, a more mild flavor to it. And regulate how many garlic cloves you use. So, I mean, these are very garlicky today. I went really kind of heavy with it, and um, but they're super delicious. So. And they don't need gravy because they're so good, just like this. Okay, then I also made this chutney. This is a cranberry chutney, and you can get organic cranberries right now at our Costco has them. Um, also check Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and buy them now and put them in the freezer. I mean, I like the cranberries all year long. And this is just a really delicious, no sugar added, cranberry chutney and so it has apple and pineapple and a little bit of date paste and a little bit of raisins in it and it's so delightful and lots of different things that you can do with it so i think tom's going to zoom in on that yeah okay so um you can have it just on your plate as a side dish goes really well with the mashed potatoes the lentil loaf and the Brussels sprouts. Um, you know, I like to also take it, if you make my um, pumpkin muffins or even the banana oat muffins, take one of those, cut it in half and heat it up and then put a little bit of the chutney on it. So delicious. Also really good stuffed into a sweet potato. So any kind of sweet potato, it can be a garnet, um, yam it can be this japanese sweet potato it, it could be a hana um, whichever kind you have but this is so delicious this could actually be dessert um, or it can be a side dish or it could be breakfast you know have your greens first and then enjoy a stuffed sweet potato it's so good you guys and i just like i can just eat the chutney just by itself it's just like that good, like I can have a, a whole, I'll eat just like a whole little dessert size dish of it just because it's so scrumptious. So, and you know what, and that taste, that's a bit of a flavor um, from our traditional meal that we used to enjoy when we were eating the standard American diet. In fact, this is a remake recipe of one that I used to make every year for the family, but it had tons of brown sugar in it. And so, you know, I had to add pineapple to it and the date paste in order to replace the sweetness that we were getting from the brown sugar. But this one is a winner, we love it. And of course you can adjust the sweetness on it um, if it's not sweet enough for you, add more date paste. If, if it's too sweet, then you know um, not to add so much the next time you make it. Okay, another thing that I like to do, oh, just stuck my elbow in the mashed potatoes, um, is just take some cold pre-baked potatoes sweet potatoes, any kind. So this is just your regular good old garnets. This is a Japanese sweet potato. I had Hannah's, I could have done Hannah's too. And then, you know, bake them, chill them. And then when they're cold, take them out, cut them in half, and then just score them. So you're going to cut, cut diagonally one direction and then diagonally the opposite direction, just so you get the, kind of like that uh, pineapple look going on there. That's what people always tell me that this reminds them of. And then I just put them in the air fryer. I put them in the cold air fryer and then set the heat to the temperature to 400 and I let them go for about 20 minutes. So what that does is they get nice and crispy on the outside and then the little edges where you've cut it, those can get a little crispy too and it just draws out the sugars that are in the potatoes and it just makes them taste like 
three, five, four, I don't know, tons times better. There's something about when you reheat them in the air fryer that they just turn amazing. And then all you have to do is add a little, just a drizzle of vinegar. And this is California Balsamic's pumpkin one. It's a new flavor that they have. It's delicious. If you don't have the pumpkin one, just sprinkle a little bit of pumpkin spice, apple pie spice, or just cinnamon on this and it is delicious. And then just a drizzle of whatever kind of vinegar you happen to have. A sweeter one though would be preferable to, like you wouldn't want to use apple cider vinegar. But if you have a nice balsamic or a white balsamic would be really nice. And it just takes just a little bit. It's, it's wonderful. It's great as a side dish. It's amazing even as a dessert and people love this people that don't normally like sweet potatoes will like them this way and our grandkids love them when they have been air fried it just does something really really special to them and it makes them amazing okay so that is pretty much what we would have maybe i would steam some broccoli or some green beans and then um, just drizzle a little bit of lemon juice on them. It would just, you know, depend on like what our daughter was making, but just to have another like a green vegetable on the table. Um, but just simple because I feel like we already have enough stuff going on that has a glaze. This tastes very rich. This has the pomegranate molasses in it. Um, so I just don't feel like um, another vegetable would need to have anything fancy like it doesn't need to be like a green bean casserole or anything like that because we just already have enough richness going but that's us if you need to have something more like that that's okay then we would move on to dessert unless you have questions um, actually Chris has got a question and she's got to go if we can ask yes, that is there sure. is can everything here be frozen is there anything that you shouldn't freeze um, uh, well, I've never frozen the cooked Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I think they would be weird frozen. That, that mm. I don't know how those would reheat, but you know. Yeah. Her I idea was, is to make a head and freeze them and then reheat for Thanksgiving Day. So Yeah, well, these are easy enough. Like you could prep these the day before and then, or two days before, they would be fine. And then just cook them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't add the marinade to them until right before I cooked them. The potatoes you can make, the mashed potatoes, they do set up a bit, you know, how mashed potatoes set up in the refrigerator, but you could thin them with a little bit of almond milk and gently heat them up, and that would be okay. The soup can be frozen, so can the lentil loaf can be frozen. I've never frozen the chutney, but you could make the chutney several days in advance and um, it would be fine um, because I'll, I can keep it in the refrigerator for like a week. Does that answer mm -hmm. that? Okay, I'm going to grab the pomegranate molasses so I can show them what that is. Okay. Because I forgot to leave it out. Are we going to get a are we are we going to get a free pantry tour or oh here you are you're back already. You're going to think free pantry tour. Okay, <laughs> so this is the one uh, vinegar I was talking about, the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve. And this is like readily available at a lot of health food stores, Whole Foods, Sprouts. Um, so check the vinegar aisle wherever you shop and see if they might have this. You can also get it on Amazon and we have it in our Amazon store and the, the link to our Amazon store is in the show notes. So you just click on the see more or the little down um, arrow and check for that. So this is a really um, reasonably priced vinegar. It's thick and syrupy and sweet and uh, works well in a lot of different recipes and it works really good in this Brussels sprouts recipe. Then this is the pomegranate um, molasses. It's just, it says just syrup. Oop, I gotta turn it the right way. It says just syrup on it. So where I live, two stores carry this. The Nugget Market carries this as well as Whole Foods. So, and I just recently saw it at Whole Foods. So they just started carrying it. And um, so it's just um, pomegranate and uh, date syrup. And it is so delicious. And so it just makes the Brussels sprouts just have a very nice fall flavor to them. Okay. 
Any other questions? Nope. Have you talked about the pudding and stuff yet? Nope, we're getting to we're, that. Okay, we're going to talk about desserts next. <laughs> so and this... Then, and then, um, here. Yeah, and then we'll be going back up through. I'll scroll the uh, comments and look for where you have question marks, and we'll get those questions to Tammy as we move forward. But let's let her finish with dessert. And okay. That way I can eat some off camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to eat dinner first. <laughs> so this is the apple oat crisp, and this recipe is in the Health Science uh, magazine and we love it i've made it many many times and we like that you know the oats uh the topping gets crisp and then you have the. it's really nice when you can serve it hot so you could you know reheat it or just have it ready to put in the oven when you guys sit down to eat dinner put it in your oven and let it bake while you're having dinner. That way you can serve it warm. And it's so delicious if you make a little bit of banana nice cream. We like the banana um, mango nice cream. You're gonna try to get a good shot of it. Yeah. Uh, we like the banana mango nice cream on top of it. You can also take- I don't know take, if we can see how crispy it is, but. but it's it's kind of granola-ish yeah. on top, which is really fun. And you can make this as sweet as you need it because it does use the date paste. And so if it's um, not sweet enough for you, you know, go ahead and taste it while you're putting it all together and just add more date paste if you want more date paste or if you like it to have more cinnamon or more apple pie spice. You know, um, we all have just a little bit different preferences and that's okay. So you can make it as sweet as you like and use as much uh, spice as you like but really fun to eat love it to have it all a mode so if you make your banana ice cream ahead of time if you take your uh, ice cream scoop and go ahead and scoop it and put it in muffin tins and I like to use the silicone ones but you can do it in any kind of muffin tin and go ahead and put it in the freezer and freeze it then when you go to serve it you already have the ice cream or nice cream already um, individual servings ready to go and so that little dollop of it looks adorable on top of the um, that crisp and makes it really easy to serve up a lot of people and if you want you could use little ramekins and just make that apple crisp all in little individual ramekins so I have some I believe they're six ounce ramekins I have like 24 of them and so when we have a big group of people that's how I like to make the desserts is just to make them in the little ramekins that way it makes serving super easy so I'll have the ramekins with you know whatever the baked dessert is or I'll put pudding in it or what have you if it's something like this that's going to be served a la mode I'll go ahead and pre-freeze the nice cream in the scoops and it just makes serving a large group of people super easy and you guys know I'm all about easy I don't want it to all take a tremendous amount of time okay so then over here we have the fall pudding and this is a recipe that was created by May Reed Reddy and she let me years ago put it on my blog it has remained an absolute favorite for us we love it now today when I made it I did a little I did it a little bit different and by the way you guys this recipe is on the blog so today it uses sweet potatoes it just uses the regular garnet yams the orange ones that we can all find and today I made it with half of those and half canned pumpkin and it, it turned out really really good but it was so thick that it made my Vitamix overheat <laughs> and my Vitamix shut off and I was freaking out because I thought oh my gosh I've broken my Vitamix in the middle of making this dessert what am I going to do um, but anyway so Tom went online because it had an error code and he went online and read that you'll get that error code if you're mixing something that's super thick and it's just taxing the motor and so it as a safety precaution it shut off so once it she's cooled, usually really good with the kitchen equipment but today not so much uh, ah, you uh, well it scared me because we've only had that for like have we had it a year that one so so anyway didn't know I could overheat my Vitamix 
So I just sprinkled a little bit of the um, pomegranate seeds on top. I love it like that or with raspberries or just plain. It's good, just plain. I've never frozen it, but I made so much of it today that I'm going to have to try freezing it. And then this is a fun little idea. If you have some of these little tiny servings, you know, it's kind of fun to serve a variety of desserts and have them be petite so that people can try more than one thing. So if you make the crisp in the little six ounce uh, ramekins it there it's just perfect because you know it's just enough not too much and then you still have room where you get to have a little bit of the fall pudding which is really fun so um, if it if it's thicker if it turns out thicker you can pipe it into the dishes which is really fun mine was just a little bit thin I did pipe it but it was a little bit thin if you don't have a piping bag you can just take a ziploc like a a freezer quart size ziplock fill it with the pudding and then snip off the corner and then you can just squeeze it out and um, have it fill it up and that's a much easier way of doing it and cleaner way too let me tell you than trying to use a spoon and get a spoon in these little dishes and then they do sell little tiny spoons for the little um, dishes like this so you can do that and you can buy, these are glass ones, but you can get disposable ones too. I've seen those at a lot of different like party stores or even like the 99 cent store will have some. And some of them are fluted and so they look kind of fun and fancy. And that's great if you're having to take dessert to someone else's house. Thank you for helping me do that, Tom. That's awesome. Now I need you to talk for a minute because ah, oh, you... my mouth is getting dry. Okay, well, I'm going to... Let's see I, what I, questions we have. Yeah, I'm going to go back up through the scroll feed here. And, um, and actually, I'm going to go up to the top because there were some uh, early okay. questions back there. So this is like super easy. So the soup you can make ahead of time. Bake the pot sweet potatoes ahead of time. Go ahead and mix up the lentil loaf a day or two before and put it in the pan. And you can bake it the day of. The cranberry relish, the um, cranberry chutney. You can make that in advance and you can also make the fall pudding in advance. So make it in advance, put it all in one container because the, it has bananas in it. And so the top of it will um, discolor after a couple of days uh, just, you know, because of oxidation. And so if you put um, plastic wrap or if you don't want to use plastic wrap, put parchment paper on it right on the surface to help keep air from getting to it to help it from turning color and the potatoes are super easy i use the yukon gold potatoes and i don't peel them so you could go ahead and pre-wash them have them all washed but don't cut them up because they will oxidize as well unless you put them in cold water but you could go ahead and wash the potatoes and then right before you put them in the pressure cooker then you could go ahead and cut them up and put them in but it's the easiest mashed potatoes recipe ever okay Tom's got a question okay question from Kelly Vollmer um, and you probably addressed some of this as we went forward but Kelly's asking are all of the recipes available on your website and if not where are they so the lentil loaf the mashed potatoes and the fall pudding are on the blog and I believe in the show notes you put links mm -hmm. Tom put links to them in the um, show notes so you'll be able to get all of those this I just told you how to make it because I've never uh, written it down you know that's kind of how I cook is just a little bit intuitively um, and so I don't always write things down so this the Brussels sprouts and the butternut squash is not on the blog the soup the um, curry ginger butternut squash soup is a recipe that you get when you subscribe to the blog so if you go over to nutmegnotebook.com and a little pop-up screen will show up and it says subscribe all you have to do is put your email address in there and that gets you on our mailing list and immediately our computer program sends you an email with links to some recipes that are just for subscribers and the curry ginger butternut squash soup is one of those recipes so the um, 
chutney recipe and the apple oat crisp recipe right now the only place they are is in the health science magazine and you can subscribe to that it's a quarterly magazine it costs 35 dollars for the year and as soon as you become a subscriber you have access to go in and look at all of their um, digital um, copies of the magazine so then you would have access immediately to the um, to these recipes because the fall magazine has already come out um, so I think that I think that oh and the salad to make the croutons this salad did you link to this salad recipe not yet but I will okay Tom will link to that um, and the I tell you how to I show you I think I even have a video where What's I show the name you. of it because they can just Google not make notebook I, I think Watch. it said new fall salad croutons with crispy JSP croutons just just Google JSP croutons okay nutmeg notebook and it should come up okay I'll have you worry I'll do that while you work on the next question okay next question so from uh, Stephanie is asking uh, what size I have to remember which camera I'm in this camera uh, Stephanie's asking what size pan did you bake bake the lentil loaf in um, it is let me grab it I'm not sure I'm not sure what size it is but that's okay. a very good question. Oh, you used one of the new silicone. I used my silicone. Yeah, she's over there drying it off because she just washed it. It's in the dish trainer. I just I was washing it right before we went live, okay. you guys. Here she is. So back. I'm literally drying it for you. So I don't think actually I don't think it tells me. It kind of looks like it's like a like nine by five. Do you think? Do you have? I'll get a ruler. Tom will get a ruler. So I use a silicone one. It comes out beautifully, but I'll tell you, you can, you can use um, a regular, a metal one. Just what I would do is take parchment paper and cut a piece that will go in this way, right? And then a longer piece to go this way and push it down in there. And that will give you handles if you leave the, the ends longer than the pan it'll give you handles to lift it out and it'll make it really easy to lift it out so let's look here yep nine nine by five is the size that i used but if you have a more narrow one then it'll be a thicker piece and you can um you probably would just have to bake it a little bit longer if it's thicker okay so i'm going to set that aside all right Okay, next question. Yes. Um, oh, so I, I, you gotta love Google. I typed in nutmeg notebook, crispy croutons and voila, there, that recipe came right up. I so love it. I've, I've got to finish pasting it into the link yeah. here. So. And so he has the um, lentil loaf with the date glaze recipe. He linked to that down in the show notes, the fall pudding and the garlic mashed potatoes. And then if you are a subscriber, you've already gotten this recipe. And if you don't, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe today and then you'll get that recipe. And then you'll get, you know, we send out like once a week, Tom on Sundays sends out a reminder about our show, um, what the topic is and what time we're going live just to help you remember. And then anytime that I do a new blog post, then you'll get a notification and a link to that as well. You know what? I had the camera on. <laughs> I had the camera on me. I had the camera on me when you were saying all that stuff, but they still heard you. Okay. So you little narcissist. Yeah. You're just start, trying to hog my camera. I forgot time. to give her her camera back, guys. I, you know, this is only our second or third time using this new switcher. So. Yes. Anyway, you got to remember to do that, huh? I got to figure it out. Dylan's got it figured out on all your world, so you I got to figure it out. You can do it, honey. I have faith okay. in you. So Allie Oakley is asking. Um, she heard that fingerling potatoes have the lowest glycemic index. Do we have any conversation? I don't. I don't know. know anything about that? I don't know. I don't know about that. Mm. Okay, um, the, but. You know, Google it. I love Dr. Google. Okay. I use Google for everything. All right. Stephanie's asking, how long will the Just Syrup last after using it in the recipe? Um, well, it should last a really long time. I don't think that it has, it doesn't have an expiration date on it. There's no expiration date. 
it's basically it's organic um, pomegranate molasses so I mean I don't know does molasses have an expiration I don't know um, but it says to not refrigerate do not refrigerate it'll crystallize yeah so it's just pomegranate juice and uh, organic medjool date syrup organic pomegranate juice and organic date syrup and it is really good it says it's good for salad dressings marinades and cocktails so low glycemic index so it's it's really delicious you guys mm -hmm. I like it a lot Allie Oakley is asking do you ever use monk fruit sugar I have not I actually somebody gave me a little packet of it but I haven't tried it so let me know is it good I'm, I'm curious I didn't know what to put it in since I don't I don't typically like drink like sweet drinks and it was just a little packet so I wasn't sure what to do with it okay so Jeanette Kelly is asking what time can they come pick up their orders oh Jeanette I wish you could come <laughs> eat with me I wish it was safe for us to do that as I was making all this stuff the last couple days I thought, oh my gosh, it's too bad we can't have a little dinner party. But we'll be eating this for days. This is good batch prep for me. And it all it it smells amazing. Like the it just everything just smells so good right now. And I actually have not eaten yet today. So I forgot I you know, don't eat breakfast and then I was so busy I forgot to eat lunch. And it wasn't until we were getting ready to go live I told Tom, oh, I didn't eat. Okay, Stephanie Simpson is asking if the silicone pan is on the Amazon page. Um, that particular one, I don't think is. What I did was I bought a set um, years ago, and that set that I bought is no longer available. But Tom, maybe you can look at the Amazon page. I can't remember. I, I found some things that were similar that I put um, on our Amazon page, but you know, it seems like a lot of the things that I buy, Amazon likes to discontinue. So crazy. Okay, Ching, King, next question. Yeah. King's Child is asking how we liked the Mama Says dishes that we got in the mail. You know what? All of the Mama Says entrees were delicious. We, we liked all of them. I was particularly fond of the Indian dishes just because I really like Indian food. But the chili, the eggplant, um, was it eggplant parmesan? Um, everything that we got was absolutely delicious. It, it really was. Now, you will have to supplement with some fresh vegetables, some fruit, some salad, um, you know, because they're, I, I, they were fairly generous portions. Some things we split, you know, some of the entrees were big enough for us to split and some Tom needed to eat the whole thing um, in order to be full but you know you can add a little bit of millet or rice or quinoa or oat groats and have a salad and some fruit really delicious so it was really nice to have those you answered uh, what the what the pudding you, you talked about the putting in the dishes I think a question came in about what's the pudding in the little dishes yes yeah, so I, I think we just hadn't got to them yet. oh okay yeah it's the fall pudding and the recipe is on the blog and here's another thing that you can do with it you guys that's really good so take if you take some of the cranberry chutney and in like a parfait glass put a layer of chutney and then a layer of the fall pudding and then more chutney and more pudding oh my gosh it is so good together really delicious because you've got that pumpkin-y flavor oh. and the cranberry and it's really really good and here i was thinking about this and tiffany with the champion juicer i was thinking what if we take some of the pumpkin the fall pudding and freeze it in ice cube trays so I have like some silicone ice cube trays. What if we take and freeze it in those silicone ice cube trays and then put it through the champion juicer and make pumpkin nice cream? Mm -hmm. We have to try that. I think that would be really exceptionally good. Okay. So 
um, if there aren't more questions, I want to show them some, we have some photos of other things that we have made for holidays that are really delicious. And none of this is complicated, you guys. It, even if you have never cooked before, you can make all of this. So there is, I show how to make this. We have a YouTube video where I show how to make the soup. The recipe's not on there, but I show you how easy it is to make it. I have a video showing you how to air fry potatoes. I have a video showing, no, we didn't do a video. I have the recipe with lots of details on how to make the lentil loaf. And, um, and the fall pudding is just putting everything in the blender. Or if you don't have a high powered blender, put it in your food processor. And the mashed potatoes, everything just goes in the pressure cooker and then you just mash them with a potato masher. So it couldn't be easier. And I have a video showing you how to make this salad. And this, this salad <laughs> is absolutely delicious with the apples and the pomegranate seeds. And this one I put persimmons in. It's so, so good. Okay, so are you sitting down now for a while? I am sitting down. Okay, I need to adjust. Change the headroom here. Oh, that's good, because then they can see more of the food too. Yeah. Yay, that works good. So I like to set a pretty table too. So, you know, I like to decorate the center of the table for the yeah. um, different holidays. It makes it really fun. But this isn't just for Thanksgiving. You can actually, you can make this any time of year. So okay. I, I don't think we're having chopped salads for dinner tonight. I am like I usually do or, oh, well, or do maybe have, I am. We do have this one. Um, well, we're, we're gonna have the special food. For sure. Okay. And it's, I don't I don't eat chopped salad for dinner anyway. I get a hot meal. Even if I, yeah, I, I just, I get a hot meal. Even though I didn't get a chopped salad today. And I might save, I might save this one. Maybe I'll save this for my lunch tomorrow. Because that'll make Monday much easier. Because this is already yeah. prepped. It doesn't have the vinegar on it. So I think it'll be fine um, to take that in my lunch tomorrow. I think that'll work. Okay, so Tom, can you bring up the pictures of, the yeah. picture of the shepherd's pie? Shepherd's pie. This is a picture of the shepherd's pie before it's cut. Okay, and so this is a really popular recipe that we have on the blog. It is a hearty lentil shepherd's pie. It's super easy. I make the filling and the garlic mashed potatoes in the pressure cooker. Uh, if you only have one pressure cooker, then you just make the filling first and then put it in your casserole dish and it will fill a nine by 13 casserole dish and then wash out the liner and then make your mashed potatoes. And then you just put the mashed potatoes over the top and put everything in the oven. And it's absolutely delicious. There's a picture of a big old thick slice of it and it is really, really good. So that is a family favorite recipe and that is what I normally make for Thanksgiving. Um, this year we won't be getting together with the extended family. We'll just be getting together with our little bubble. There's um, eight of us in our tiny little bubble. And uh, they're just the people that, the only people that we've seen since the pandemic started. And that's what I usually make. Um, but even when we're getting together with the extended family and the standard American diet eaters, they love it too, because who doesn't love mashed potatoes? Um, so thank you for showing that. And then That's let's a, show them. Fabi C is asking how you freeze the pomegranates. Um, the pomegranate seeds? Yeah. Oh, well, um, you can just put them in a, um, like a Tupperware container and freeze them, or you could put them in a freezer bag and freeze them, and that's all I do. Um, so I just, um, I just uh, opened this pomegranate today and got all the seeds out, and um, we'll probably end up eating all of these. Uh, I, I probably won't have any to freeze, but, um, but I do like to freeze them, uh, and that way we have them to use throughout the season because I love them on like everything. They're so good on desserts and in your salads. So let's, can we show them a picture of the um, lentil, little mini lentil muffins? The I guess they're not mini. 
but the lentil muffin. Sure. So um, here's another recipe. These are uh, kind of a barbecue flavor, and these are like lentil loaf, but they're individual. You make them in muffin pans, and that makes serving super easy. They freeze beautifully. Um, I just, I love them. And the recipe is on the blog, and that's another nice thing to make for the holidays, um, or even just to batch cook them for yourself and your family, because they freeze really nice, and you can pull out just however many that you need. So when I make them, I usually make a double batch of them, and then freeze them, and they reheat beautifully, like in the microwave. Um, if you don't use the microwave, you could just let them thaw out fully in your refrigerator, and then you could try heating them up in your air fryer or just put them um, in a skillet on top of the stove and put the lid on and gently heat them that way. Next entree, lasagna? Oh yeah, so we're gonna show you, um, our family loves lasagna and uh, it's, this is something that the grandkids will eat. So this is normally what we have for Christmas dinner, New Year's, um, because it's something that everybody likes. I now have to make two pans of it because one is not enough um, because we have so many people who love it and want extra. There is no reason that you can't change things up and do something different for the holidays. You don't have to try and recreate your old standard American diet um, meal. You can change it up and do something different. And we certainly have for a lot of the holidays. And so, um, and I wouldn't be opposed to having lasagna for Thanksgiving if anybody wants in the family wanted to have that. And it's very easy to make the recipes on the blog. I have a YouTube video. Um, I, sh I have a video showing you how to make all the different components from the marinara to the tofu ricotta to the easiest way to assemble it. And so that's super easy. And then for desserts, did, was there another? Oh, Tom. No, no, we're not ready for dessert. We're not. We got to talk about turkey appetizers. Yep, Tammy had makes turkey appetizers. Here we go. Here we Check go. Check out this. Okay, well that one I didn't make. That one our daughter's <laughs> sister-in-law made. Oh, the other one's yours. Yeah, but um, when we do get together with the extended family, um, she likes to make us a vegan turkey. And so that is just all made out of fruit. Isn't it fun? And melons. And melon. And um, I think that one was maybe a spaghetti squash was mm -hmm. the body on that one. And, you know, the kids love the skewers with the fresh fruit on it. And it's so much fun. And, and here's one that Sweet Pea, our, grand, our oldest granddaughter, and I made last year. And so this is really fun. It's a great family activity to do. And um, she loved seeing how it all came together. Although she was really, she wanted to eat the turkey's eyes because they were raisins and she loves raisins. And so I have a video all about how to make that. It's really easy, you guys. And um, that's on the, I think we have it on the blog as well as a YouTube video. And that is a really fun thing um, to, to take someplace or just to do with your family at home. And, um, and everybody will eat it and it's delicious and it, it's just festive and it's fun. And so you, that way you get to have a little bit of art and a little bit of food and it just makes it for a fun thing. You wanna catch so. a couple of questions? Sure. Okay, so I'm... Um Scrolling up, well, I'll go back down to where the question was. Why did I do that? Um, I don't know. Uh, the question was about, do you consider, this is from uh, Sharon Andrews, do you consider an air fryer an essential appliance? I notice a lot of your food is cooked with one. We're going to be talking about essential kitchen things yes, coming up so soon. Yes, so next Sunday, um, next Sunday for our live, we're going to talk about what our favorite kitchen items are. Because um, I was interviewed last week by Dr. Yami, for her podcast and it won't air until December and I'll let you guys know when it's gonna air. And so she asked me, well, you know, what do you find that is essential for you in the kitchen? And I thought, oh, well, that was a really good question. You know, we really enjoy our air fryer. Is it 
a necessity to maintain this lifestyle? Absolutely not. You don't have to have one. Is it fun? Yes, it is. It is fun to have an air fryer. So we actually have two. We have the Breville Smart Oven Air, which you can see behind me. Oh, Tiffany, my flowers are there. At the very last minute, Tom remembered to go grab the flowers and put them there for you. So the Breville Smart Oven Air is an air fryer, a dehydrator, a broiler, a toaster. A, it will proof dough. You can use it as a slow cooker if you put a Dutch oven in it. It holds a 9 by 13 pan. It holds a 12 cup muffin pan. I have a video all about it and we love it and we like to air fry um, different foods. Sometimes I'll reheat my entire dinner in the air fryer. I'll put corn on the cob, a veggie burger, you know, just a veggie burger patty and um, some potatoes and maybe some broccoli or mushrooms and just air fry all of my dinner. And it's just super easy and just makes everything delicious. So not a necessity, but now that we've had one, I wouldn't want to be without. The other one that we have is a milky crisp lid that fits on top of a pressure cooker. So it turns your pressure cooker into like a little mini air fryer. And we really like, we like that one too. Uh, Another question. TR is asking, is the mini lentil loaf the same recipe as the new lentil loaf recipe? It is not. They're two different recipes, two different flavor profiles. And they're both really good. They're just, they're, but they're different. They're definitely different. But very, they're both very good. Okay, let's go. Let's see. I've got something up in the queue here. Oh, the pudding. This is the look down shot oh. <laughs> of the pudding that you have sitting here on the yeah, little stand. Yeah, that's a look down shot of okay, the pudding. Okay, I forgot what I had in the queue. So yeah, that, that's one of your photos from the blog with how you arranged your pomegranate seeds. You arranged them so nicely. Thank you, darling. How many are there? You can count them. All right. What did you want me to show for dessert? Um, let's show the brownie. Uh, the brownie. Okay, here we there go. There we go. Got it. So okay, you, brownie's coming up. If you like something chocolate then you would probably like the chocolate cherry brownies and i have added um and a little um i edited the recipe because my friend shada from healthy cooking with shada uh called me this was months ago and told me she made the brownies um, she made them exactly the way my recipe was written the first time and then she made them again but the second time she added a tablespoon of fresh orange juice and a tablespoon of orange zest and she was like it took them over the top and I have been making them that way ever since so I edited the recipe to add that so if you have made them in the past and they were perfectly delicious and yummy the way the recipe was written but she is right that little bit of orange just takes them over the top and so I have a video and the recipe for those is on the blog and this next week, hopefully, we'll get out. We um, have a recipe coming out to make a chocolate brownie parfait. And I show you how to make the chocolate ice cream and how to use those brownies to assemble into a parfait. So go ahead and bake a batch of those brownies now and put them in the freezer. So as soon as that video comes out, you'll be able to make the parfaits. Next dessert. Next dessert. Oh, this is our... Um, peach cherry or cherry peach cobbler and this is really good uh, when the peaches are in season I make this like every week it's so delicious but even in the winter time I make it and I just buy frozen peaches and the great thing about it is they're already sliced for you they're also peeled and sliced and so I will just buy organic frozen peaches and frozen organic cherries and I will use those to make that crisp and it actually uses the banana oat muffin mix and so you just make up the banana oat muffin mix dry and then I tell you how much to use to make that crisp and it's delicious and I do take that and I um, cut the fruit up small and put it in my little six ounce ramekins and I will make crisp for like a large group of people. I've made it for like 20 people. And I will just make it in those little ramekins and they get just a nice petite little serving, but it's enough. Because, you know, after you've eaten all of this stuff, 
this is so filling, you don't have room for a great big dessert. And so the little ramekins work out perfect for that. So you can, you know, just double the recipe, quadruple the recipe, whatever you need to do, but you're only getting, you know, everybody's getting a small serving. And so, and you can use any fruit you like. It doesn't have to be the peaches and the cherries. You can change up the fruit. I use just like whatever I happen to have. And if I have like frozen mixed berries, then it becomes that. Speaking of mixing up the fruit, TR is asking if the, you can use strawberries instead of cherries in the um, brownies. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't. Sure. And if you had no cherries or berries, I think I, somebody asked me what to do one day because they wanted to make them. And I said, just use some more banana. Um, I just, I kind of like the, the chocolate and the cherry together is nice, but you know, you could use raspberry. You could use, um, you could even use probably blueberry. It would be good. And so, you know, that's, that, that was a really great question too, because um, I need to remind you guys that recipes are just an idea. So normally when we're baking, we need to kind of stick to the recipe, right? Because it's, it's more science because it's about getting the dry and liquid ingredients at just the right amounts and the leavening agent just at the right amount. But when it comes to like cooking all this stuff, you know, you can change things depending on what your personal preferences are. And that's the fun thing about cooking. And sometimes things flop and I get, I have flops too, right, Tom? And um, sometimes that just happens and that's okay. Yeah, if something flops, it just goes in my dump soup and I eat it for much. <laughs> Hardly. Okay, what's going on in this picture? It's, this is an alternative okay. Thanksgiving meal with some yeah. of the same stuff. Yeah, so I think this is one that we did um, last year. We did a video last year and a blog post on what I was making last year. So that is um, Brussels sprouts and... Um, I think that is the beet mango salad out of Chef AJ's book, um, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, and um, it's delicious. And the same soup, the butternut squash soup, and the shepherd's pie, and then some stuffed um, squash. And I think in the video I talked about um, what I stuffed it with. And so, and you can just, you can just oven roast some squash too. And that makes a wonderful uh, side dish. And if you sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon, oh, it's so yummy. And 400 degrees, put it on a silpat mat and it will caramelize. You don't have to use any oil. It, the side that's facing down will caramelize um, if you leave it in the oven long enough and it'll get that nice golden look to it and it is so delicious in fact i posted yesterday i cooked um, i baked acorn squash and delicata squash in the oven and i posted pictures on facebook of how it caramelized no oil looks delicious is delicious oh we've got that to eat too we've got so much food to eat you guys we're, we're not going to have to cook again for the entire week Okay, well, I think we're out of questions in, um, oh, no, we're not out of questions. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, Stephanie Sis Simpson is asking, can you use frozen mango in the beet mango salad recipe? You can. I use frozen mango in it most of the time because a lot of times the day that I decide to make it, you go to the store and you can't find a mango that's ripe. And so, yes. You can use frozen. I just thaw it out, let it thaw out, and then mix it, mix it up. And it works great. It, it's such a good salad, too. It, and if you use a little, you can either use mint or you can use cilantro in it, depending on what your personal preference is. I've made it both ways, and I like it both ways. Very good. Okay, so I think you addressed this, but, me, but, but John Warren is asking, yes. where's the recipe for the balsamic glade Brussels sprouts? And I think the answer is it's not written down. It's not written is down. Is it a three-sentence verbal? It John, is. John, get your pencil and paper ready. Get your pencil and paper ready, and I'll tell you. And then maybe we can put it in the show notes, too. Um, so we'll give him a chance. So what it is is 
two tablespoons of this vinegar or some sweet vinegar. It could be like, um, it needs to be a sweeter vinegar, uh, I think. Name that in case you can't. And so it. this yeah. is Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve Balsamic Vinegar. It's only 4% acidity and it's one of those thick and syrupy type of vinegars or any of the vinegars from like California balsamic you could use too. And then I use, you should see if this is on our, if we can get this on Amazon. And Just put, syrup? Uh-huh. It's the pomegranate one. They have a plain one too. And then two tablespoons of this pomegranate syrup. Now, if you don't have pomegranate syrup, you could just use four tablespoons of this. This just adds a fun little different um, flavor twist to it. Tom's looking right now to see if it's available on Amazon. I'm adding if, it to our pantry page, our pantry. Okay, he's adding it to our pantry page. Um, I found it at Whole Foods and also the Nugget Market, which we have here, also carries it. So probably like higher end grocery stores would have it and some place like um, Cost Plus Imports, if you have that store, they might also have it. So, um, so two tablespoons of each of these, or it could just be four tablespoons of a thick syrupy vinegar. And you know, you could pick a flavor that you like. You know, it, you can get a pomegranate um, vinegar too, and that would work. And then uh, four tablespoons or quarter cup of mustard. And uh, you can use either D the Dijon, but that does have salt in it, or use the no salt added West Bray uh, mustard. And we have that available on our Amazon page. They also have it like at Sprouts, health food stores. Whole Foods used to have it, but our Whole Foods doesn't have it anymore. And then I okay. use- On the pomegranate stuff, it's, uh -huh. it says available at Whole Foods. It's not letting me add it to our Amazon Oh, it's page. just, yeah, it's on the so it's, it's Amazon a, it's shop. It's a local delivery or local pickup, but, not, but it's not letting me put it in our shop. Yeah, so, and so sorry. then I just, I used uh, one pound of Brussels sprouts and I trimmed and quartered them, fresh Brussels sprouts. And then it was a 12 ounce bag of already peeled and, um, cut butternut squash and I just cut them smaller because I wanted them to be able to cook in the amount of time. As many garlic cloves, just thinly sliced as you like. I probably did about four or five garlic cloves and then uh, half a teaspoon of onion powder and half a teaspoon of garlic powder with the marinade and black pepper if you wish. And then just pour the marinade over everything in a bowl, stir it up preheat your oven to 400 degrees and put the Brussels sprouts and the squash and the garlic with the marinade on it on a silpat mat in a rimmed baking dish or use um, parchment paper and then I just put them in the oven for like 40 minutes or until they you know are as done as you like them. And that's, so that's how we pretty make much these. sounds like a full recipe that okay, I need a to blog write it down. post and, okay. and pictures and and the whole thing, but yeah. Um, what about just using um, date paste with, with instead of the cranberry? It was a question from um, uh, I'll find how, uh, from Alyssa. Would um, date syrup work in place of pomegranate syrup? You could, tr yeah, yes, oh yes, you could absolutely do that. Sure, that would be great. That would be a great substitute. Or I've also done it with just using, oops, got to go the right way, just using this vinegar, four tablespoons of um, this vinegar and the mustard. And, but I also like the addition of the onion powder and the garlic powder and some freshly ground black pepper and, um, and then having the fresh garlic sliced up in that as well. It's really good and it's good hot or cold, it is. So that's uh, yummy. So I guess I need to do, I need to do a blog post on it. I guess I wasn't thinking that it was really a recipe, recipe that it was just like kind of throwing stuff together. But I guess there's a lot of details to it. So, but I hope you guys will try the lentil loaf, the soup, the Brussels sprouts, the garlic mashed potatoes, the desserts. I mean, these are like just really delicious. 
I mean, once, you know, between this and the uh, shepherd's lentil pie and the mini um, loaves, lentil loaves, uh, I just, you know, I don't want for more recipes, I guess, for the holidays because these really satisfy um, what we desire to have for the holidays. And it just makes it easy. I don't want to spend all day in the kitchen. Um, you know, I want to just um, have it be easy. So, and this is really, this is really easy. This is fun and easy. Is the peach crisp, the cherry peach cobbler? Or is that yes. The, okay. Cherry peach cobbler. Okay, I put that into the show notes. Okay, Tom added the cherry peach cobbler. If you don't see it right now, it's because you'll need to refresh your page when we get done. And then, you know, the things that he's added down there should show up. And then did you add, you added the salad, how to make this salad? I started to, but I, I jumped back. I, I still need to do that. Okay. I put it in and I didn't save, and so I, I don't see it in there now. Oh, because no. I'm bouncing between show notes and, and what else is going on. Yeah, I get it. It's and hard. John Warren just super chatted you. Oh, thank you, John. So Same. there we go. But um, this soup is one of my favorite soups, you guys. And I keep it in the freezer all year long. So um, it's, just, it's just soothing to me. I just, I really like it. Sometimes I just have a cup of it and I'll just, um, like in the winter time, my salad makes me cold at lunch. And so sometimes I'll have a cup of the soup hot after I have that cold salad. Because I want the salad, but then I'm really cold. So I'll have a cup of that soup. Or I love it for dinner. I like to put the rice, wild rice or oat groats or brown rice um, in the bottom of the bowl. Put the hot soup over the top of it and then chop up arugula to put on top. And it's so good. It's just super delicious. So I love our food. I'm just so happy that we get to eat, you know, such amazing food that's healthy for us health promoting but yet it tastes amazing so who doesn't want that it just it makes me very very happy and did you put a link to the health science magazine yes that's Where in there i'm trying to register? get the crispy crouton in here now okay he's working on that salad recipe too you guys so it says new chopped salad crispy crouton so i'll clean it up later but it let me push save before i lose it because i put it in once and lost it and i didn't push I left and when I came back it wasn't there so I, I just did I, I did I googled not bag notebook crispy crouton <clears throat> and it came good. right up good so it's in there it's now easy. after you refresh okay all right Fantastic. Um, and then I got to find I got to find I got to find this YouTube show again what camera am I on where are you Tom doesn't know where he is okay here's the question um, yes. from Annette does the curry make the soup very spicy no, it doesn't. It's not like, um, it's not spicy hot. No, it isn't. But curry powder varies from brand to brand. And so, you know, if you um, don't want it to be real spicy, start with a very small amount because you can always add more, but you can't take away. So uh, start with a very small amount and um, that way you can make sure that it's not going to be too strong for you because they all vary. The brands are so different. Okay, Jerry's got a question. I don't know what it's about because I was fiddling over here on okay. YouTube. Sure. Uh, what temperature? For the Brussels sprouts? I think so. 400 degrees. Okay, and? For, I do for 40 minutes in my oven on convection. I do 40 minutes. So you'll just have to watch them uh, and depending on how hot your oven is, you might have to stir them every 15 to 20 minutes. I don't stir mine. I just leave them in there. Um, but um, you'll just have to determine, you know, and everybody's oven runs different. So yours could run hotter. Yours might be done in 30 minutes. So you just, just want to check them. Um, I like the little, um, the little extra leaves that fall off. I like those to get crispy. Of course, they're not crispy now because I put them in this bowl and and all the steam um, from, from being hot made all the crispy stuff um, go limp. 
but normally what I do is I pick all those off the, off the pan and I eat them hot out of the oven because they're so amazingly delicious. So it's just not the prettiest dish, but oh, they're so yummy, you guys. Okay, a question came in uh, yes. while I was fiddling around over here. Um, can you uh, suggest a sweet substitution for the date topping a substitute for the date topping on the lentil loaf. Well, um, if so, you don't have dates. Is that the issue? You could use maple syrup if you have um, maple syrup. You could use that, but you need something creamy. If you had date sugar, you could probably use a little bit of date sugar. If you had um, just, you could just blend some. Um, I don't know, maybe you could use raisins. You might be able to use some raisins and make like, instead of a, a date paste, maybe you could make like a raisin paste because raisins are really sweet or apricots, dried apricots are really sweet. So you might be able to use some dried apricots. If you have like a small little like mini food processor, maybe you could make like apricot paste instead of date paste or you might be able to use a little bit of maple syrup. Maple syrup is more refined than the date paste. That's why we use the date paste because we're still getting the whole natural fruit and we're getting all of the um, benefits from it. All the nutrition is still intact. Uh, Question came in from Alisa, or no, not Alisa, uh, from Carolee. Are you ever going, uh, well, it actually, it's a matter of when are you planning on posting the, the crisp, the apple crisp recipe? Yeah, I don't know. We haven't, we haven't talked about that. You know, it was just, I created those two recipes for the health science um, magazine layout. And um, so we haven't decided. We don't have that scheduled. We right? don't have it scheduled yet. And we already have a lot of things in the coffers f to come out, so. Okay, um, Karen Jacobs is asking, and I may have missed it too, wh where the recipe for the cranberry chutney is? That's also in the magazine. Okay, so that one's not been yeah, published. Yeah, what isn't published is the apple oat crisp and the cranberry chutney. Those both debuted in the fall issue of the Health Science um, Magazine. They are published just on that location. That's the only place they've been published. Yeah. Okay. And from Kathy, where do they find the soup recipe? And, and that is for subscribers only to the Nutmeg Notebook blog. So, and that's free to subscribe. So you go to nutmegnotebook.com and a little pop-up screen comes up and says subscribe. You put your email address in there and then our computer program Send automatically sends you an email with a link to the PDF where you can print the recipe and you get some other recipes with it as well. And if you don't see it in your inbox, you know, after like 10, 15 minutes, look in your junk email folder or your spam email folder because oftentimes it ends up in there since you're since we are not included in your contact um, list it will oftentimes the program will shoot it over into spam or junk and it's not junk and then print it off so i want to change that i want to to um, do something different and post this recipe on the blog, but we'll see. Um, okay. <laughs> Jesse says, Jesse says, I'm sorry that all this wonderful food is sitting on the table getting cold <laughs> while we ask a million and questions. It, and the potatoes were steaming hot when I brought, I brought them over and put them there right before we went live. They're so steamy hot. I'm kind of losing my appetite now though. Like the, the hunger pain, the hunger has like subsided and so and I was really hungry when we first started I was like oh my gosh I just want to eat something but I didn't want to mess anything up so fun 
But okay. hey, we could have an eating party. We could all eat together. It would okay. be fun. Okay, I think we're caught up. All right, awesome. Um, so, if I missed a question, um, and yeah, Mar uh, uh, Miss Iris is asking, aren't you getting hungry looking at all this food? So yeah, I'll be, I've been sipping on my, my warm tea to keep my tummy busy. This is nice. uh, my ginger turmeric tea. Nice. To keep me. Oh, are we both on screen now? Mm hmm Oh, nice. That's nice. Well, I was, because I was talking, so. Good. But for a while I had me on screen while you were talking, and, but the screen was on me. So they thought I was going to talk, but I didn't. I just was sitting there looking at the notes. So I haven't. You know what? I have like uh, two computers in front of me and uh, and a monitor screen of what's going out to the feed and running like three different programs at once. I'm, I'm doing the job that in a television television studio would be like three people. So that's why I'm I'm still learning to dance on the buttons. Um, but you're doing good. Yeah. So you're doing really good. Anyway, but we we had to do a problem with the. Um, lip syncing on the front end because this program and this computer is a seven tenths of a millise of a second delay where wow. the one we did before was only three. I had it set on three, so we had a I had help from everybody getting the oh, good. getting That's your, good that you guys are keeping him getting your on lips task. to match your mouth movement. That's good. Well it's so, not fun to watch somebody who's yeah. lips oh, and voice are not matched okay, up. Okay, here here's a great question from okay. Michael. Um, how many hours did it take to prepare this entire meal? That's a great I don't know. question. That is, I don't know. That's a good question because, you know, as I was cooking, I was doing other things. So we were doing some blog work and, you know, doing some things to get ready for tonight. I was doing laundry, you know, so that... As it's... usual, I was doing a lot of dishes. <laughs> Tom was doing dishes. So I made the... Yesterday, I made the apple crisp and the cranberry chutney, and um, like I went grocery shopping and then came home and I made those. And so that probably took um, that probably took an hour probably to make those two things yesterday. So mm -hmm. I had those made, and then this morning I mixed up the lentil loaf, but I didn't um, cook it. The soup I already had frozen because. I keep that made almost all the time. I have that in the freezer. Or when I, I'm about to run out or when I use the last one, then I usually make more of it. And the potatoes I already had batch baked because I baked potatoes. I did our batch cooking yesterday. Um, so I already had those done. So today I just had to do the lentil loaf, the Brussels sprouts, and the potatoes. So, and, but I don't know how long that took couple hours yeah took a couple hours but um, but you know we're we were multitasking doing other things at the same time going and switching laundry folding laundry you know um, Stephanie is pointing out that there's a benefit to my doing dishes because I have hands like mad because <laughs> we use palm olive I think that was palm olive Madge was selling palm she olive. was palm olive Put yes. your, what am I soaking my finger oh it's palm olive that's quite <laughs> that's quite a memory. Well, actually, we use Dawn dish soap, or no. or no, right now we have Costco brand. We have Costco brand because we limit where we're going shopping these days. So we buy what co whatever Costco has. We buy. That's funny. Okay. Um. But if you want to recreate this meal, there's so much that you can do ahead of time, you guys. So you know you can do a lot the day before. And it just makes the day of so much easier. Because I hate being faced with tons of dirty dishes um, before we sit down to a nice meal. And I like to have the dishes all done before we eat. Because I just hate the thought, well, the, like the whole time I'm eating, thinking about all the dirty dishes I need to go wash. Well, let, let's wrap this up so that we can sit down to a nice meal. Yes, we are going to have and, a great meal. And I'm going to try to figure out which buttons to push because we got to turn off the camera stream that is the, the software that's streaming the software to our our uh, broadcasting machine and and then i got to shut off the youtube video itself and so i haven't quite sorted out 
I wonder if Dylan's got that all figured out yet, what to turn off when. I'm sure he does. So anyway. You need to call and talk to him. I'm Tom. And I'm Tammy. Wait, and I wait. I'm not on the right screen to turn anything <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. That's Computer cool. first, right? Yes, we, we, we turn it off. I don't know. You need to first. take notes. You need to write. You need to make a note. We're just going to stay here because I don't know how to turn it off. Okay. Well, then I'm going to get plates <laughs> and we're just going to start eating. Okay. We'll have dinner with everybody. All right. Give us a quick thumbs up if you haven't already, please. Yeah. Push that bell. Um, and you guys, <laughs> if, you, if you have an Instagram account, could you please follow me on Instagram? So I'm trying to get up to having 10,000 followers so that I can have access to more of the tools that they have on Instagram, but you have to have 10,000 followers to achieve that. And so if you could go to Instagram, there's a free app that you can get for your smartphone and you have to make an account, but it's free and you don't have to post anything if you don't want to, but um, follow me. So I'm at 9,000, no, am I at, I'm at like 9,150. 9, you need, you need like 850 more. Yeah, so I need you guys to follow me on Instagram so I can get that. Also, on you guys might not know, but on Saturdays on the Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page, I post a Super Salad Saturday post, and then everybody can post um, a picture of their favorite salad from the week. I just ask that it be oil-free and that you put a description in there and let everybody know what you put in your salad. It just helps give us all ideas on different ways to make our salads for those of us who are eating salads every day for one of our meals. And so that's really fun. And then once a month, I pick somebody from um, the people that have been posting and then they get um, two nice travel size bottles of vinegar from Thomas at California Balsamic. So um, it's really fun. And it's really fun for me to see all your guys' beautiful salads. And then on Sunday mornings, Tom and I do a Facebook Live sometime between like 7.15 and 7.30 on our Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page. And we do a live while we walk and talk. And that's our morning walk. And we answer questions and chit chat with the people. And there's usually 50, 60 people on for that and that's really fun so we'd love it if you wanted to join us for that as well and thank you to TR for the super chat for Tammy oh thank you so much that's so nice and okay all uh, right well we hope that you guys um, have a really fun and delicious holiday season and we hope that we were able to help you with some ideas on what you might make and you can see how simple and easy we make dining for the holidays. And um, so we, we hope that this was helpful for you. Okay, are you got it figured out how to shut off now? Yeah, Did I think I, I, shut, I shut it off here. Um, okay, I think I bought him some time. We'll see. Okay. So I'm Tammy. And, and I, I talk when I don't know which button I'm going to push. I'm going to push the one. <laughs> Computer first. That's what we decided. That's what you said. I don't know. Okay. All right. And I, we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a, a time. time. Thanks, you guys. See you next time. Then do you have to...